Hi, so this lesson is about uh, stem cells. And you've already learnt about um, how the unspecialized cells become specialized. We've talked about this process of differentiation. Um, so we're just going to learn a little bit more about the, these unspecialized cells or, or, or stem cells. Uh, there are different types of stem cells, uh, and we can we can use stem cells in science as well. So just have a look at this screen for a minute or two. Read through uh, the success criteria. This is what you should be able to do um, by the time you finish this video. So we've already said a, a stem cell is undifferentiated. It is not a specialized cell. Um, but they are able to specialize. They can undergo that process of differentiation and become a specialized cell, as you can see in the diagram on the right hand side. Uh, stem cells can also self renew, so they can divide and make more identical stem cells. So, from National 5, from National 5, you, you know there are different types of stem cell. There are two main types that you need to know about. There's embryonic and adult or tissue stem cells. So what, from what you know in National 5, what do you know about the potential of these two different types of stem cell? Focus on the, the embryonic stem cells, first of all. So these cells, these have the most potential. Um, so these are, are found in, in something called the blastocyst. Now, as you developed, you you were used to be a zygote, a single cell, and then that cell divided into two, into four, into eight, and so on and so on, until eventually it became a, a ball of cells, a blastocyst. And, and those, there were cells within the blastocyst that are the embryonic stem cells. And if you think about it, you, as you are now, with your more than 200 different types of cells that, that make you up, well, that all came from the blastocyst. So these cells that are found there, these embryonic stem cells, they have the potential to become any type of cell uh, within the human body. And they're described as being pluripotent um, because, because they have um, this potential to become any type of cell. Now, tissue or adult stem cells don't have as much potential uh, as the embryonic stem cells. So, for example, a tissue stem cell in the brain can only become um, a, a type of brain cell. So there are many different types of brain cell, um, but a stem cell in the brain can only become a brain cell. A stem cell in the brain couldn't become a type of heart cell. A stem cell in the brain couldn't become a type of blood cell uh, that are made in the, in the bone marrow. So these tissue stem cells have less potential, um, less ability, less of an ability to, to differentiate than the embryonic stem cells. So these are described as multipotent um, instead of pluripotent. Just an example here of, of uh, a tissue stem cell. So at the top, you've got the, these tissue stem cells found in the bone marrow. So these, these cells have the potential to turn into, to differentiate into any type of blood cell, but only any type of blood cell. It couldn't become a bone cell, couldn't become a brain cell, couldn't become a heart cell. They have a limited potential, multipotent. Take a, a minute to have a think about this question. Why do you think tissue or adult stem cells have less potential to differentiate than embryonic stem cells. Uh, and there's a clue. Adult stem cells have already partially differentiated. So just pause and have a think about it for a minute. So hopefully this diagram helps you to understand the difference between uh, the two types of stem cell. So at the top, we've got an embryonic stem cell. And at the bottom, we've got a tissue stem cell. And you notice that some of the genes on the tissue or within the tissue stem cell have been have already been switched off. 
you know, remember last time we said that cells differentiate by having some of their genes switched off. So an embryonic stem cell has complete potential. None of its genes have yet been switched off. Whereas a tissue stem cell uh, has already had some of its genes switched off. So that limits the potential it has to become uh, different types of cells. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this um, because you're going to you're going to spend a bit of time researching this yourself. So just you need to know about the, the uses of stem cells. And there are two main areas highlighted here on the screen that you need to know about. So you need to know about the, the use of stem cells in research uh, and the use of uh, stem cells in medicine, basically. So stem cells can be grown uh, within a lab and then these cells can be used to, to see, to study how diseases develop within cells. Um, can also be used to study how drugs affect particular cells um, instead of using perhaps animals, testing on animals as perhaps was done in the past. Um, research is also being done on, on stem cells into getting a better understanding of, of cell growth, differentiation and gene regulation because uh, and a better understanding of these three things will help us to uh, be able to solve the issue of, uh, of cancer. So three therapeutic uses that, that, that uh, stem cells are used for now, uh, bone marrow transplants, skin grafts, uh, cornea repair. I won't go into detail on this because you'll do a bit of research on these, but there's also potential uses of stem cells, future uh, uses hopefully of how stem cells may be able to benefit us in the future. There are some ethical issues surrounding uh, the use of stem cells. Um, so there's not necessarily a right or a wrong answer to, to some of these questions. It depends on where you're coming from and what you believe yourself personally. Um, so maybe just pause the, the video and have a read through some of the ethical issues. Okay, so just to check that you've got the main points from, from the lesson, pause the video and uh, have a go at answering these questions. You should be able to answer these questions.